Hello, hello! Perfidious Pete here. Back to turn Westeros's premier power couple loose down in the never-ending nightmare of Perfidious or Minor in Darkest Dungeon. And I think Ned and Caitlin, they're they're like Westeros's premier power couple, right? If there was a, a Game of Thrones version of, say, like, you know, like People magazine or maybe like a Cosmo or an Us Weekly or TMZ or whatnot, they would rate Ned and Caitlin as, as like the premier power couple. They're the Brangelina of Westeros, if you will. Sure, there are some other power couples. You got the Kyle and the Khaleesi. I think they'd rank up there. Probably also... Uh, maybe Jamie and Cersei, although they're sort of on the down low. I'm not really sure they would make the list just because the Westerosi version of people would be afraid of the litigation. And, I mean, Cersei is the queen after all. What other power couples would we throw in there? Littlefinger and Littlefinger, I think, is definitely a power couple. Probably he and himself. Together, it's it's an unstoppable duo. Maybe Stannis and the Red Woman, perhaps? I mean, Egraine and Jon Snow, they're on the list, but... They're a pity entry, a pity entry. But their parents, Ned and Caitlin, I, I, I can't really think of like a, a more powerful power couple. Yeah, don't bother you with such petty distractions. Oh, sorry, Ned, you're too good to go in and kill the Sonorous Prophet. Well, we want to do a veteran mission with you guys because we need EXP. I want to try and keep the EXP on our main team here. The problem is I don't, I don't really want to go to the Cove. What's the mission reward here in the Cove? A Blight Amulet, which... Actually, it's pretty useful for us. We tend to run a lot of Plague Doctors. It would, in fact, be useful for Caitlyn herself. All right, then. You, you suckered me into it. We're going to go. We'll do it fine, Ned. You want to, you want the big challenge. You want to go down to King's Landing and try and be the hand of the king? All right, but, you know, be uh, the, the, the outcome of this be on your own head, Ned. <laughs> I kid, it won't be on your own head because yours gets chopped off. Uh, I want to get rid of this in favor of, I think, Shadow Fade. Actually, wait. Don't you have a skill that makes you move backwards? We could give you point blank shot instead of pistol shot, but I would really rather give you point blank shot instead of tracking shot. Let's go make that adjustment. I wouldn't mind having Shane do a little flip floppery because it doesn't really matter which position Ned is in. He's good from either spot. So, Shane, let's take you up here. We're going to go ahead and... This is a lot of money. I, I, I agree. Run away, Shane. Run away. And you're just going to ride off into the sunset, too. We both know you're going to break my heart, Shane. Even though you didn't really have a choice because you were dead on that horse. But still, I'm still going to be heartbroken, just like that kid was. So the usual suspects are back up to their just patented shenanigans. Holy Lance, uh, these things all seem acceptable. Caitlin, your skills never change. Likewise, Padme Amidala, your skills don't really ever change anyway. So let's get you guys some trinkets. Trinket time. All right, Ned Stark, what do we got for you? Also, sort our trinkets by, yes, unequip everything and sort them by rarity, please, so we can sort of see what we've got. Do we want to take a bunch of extra stress for bonus healing? The bonus healing is nice, but I don't know if it's worth all that extra stress. We definitely do want to take some extra stress here for the extra 40% light and stun chance. The, the, I mean, the Blasphemous Vial is almost necessary gear for your Plague Doctor. We could also give you bonus accuracy at the expense of HP. I'm a little hesitant to give you minus HP, actually, because we're going into the cove. I, you know what? I, no, I'm not. I'm actually not going to do that. Going into the cove makes it too risky. There are too many high damage enemies there with high critical. It's it's just a bad proposition. I could give you blight resistance and uh, for a spike penalty to speed, but I really would prefer to not reduce your speed. Do we have anything that would give you bonus dodge or bonus damage? Actually, bonus damage for you is not really that important. Bonus speed would be good. A little bonus dodge wouldn't hurt. Um, I mean, we could make it a little more stun. No, you, really, you're good. I think just rocking the Blasphemous Vile. What are we going to give to Padme Amidala? We should give her a little something, something. Unholy Slayer's Ring? We're not really going to be fighting any unholy. I believe all of the mermen are all eldritch. Lead skills, you don't have any. We should definitely give that, actually, to our highwayman, though. Um, a health stone? For a penalty, you know what? For minus one speed, yeah, a little extra health would do you some, some good. Your dodge is already miserable. I don't want to really tank it any further, especially not for stun resistance. You're probably acceptable just the way you are. 
Do I want to take extra stress for a little extra protection? The answer to that question is no. Your speed is terrible, though, so you know what, Ned Stark? I am comfortable as hell tanking the shit out of your speed. Extra damage to take away some of your miserable dodge. Why is your dodge so low? Oh, because you, you're clumsy. Wow, clumsy sucks. Well, if you already can't dodge, you may as well have the damage. Anything else we want to give you? I mean, we could give you a dodge stone to buff your damage, but I think that's going on our highwayman. Stun charm, blight charm, none of this stuff really seems particularly useful. Well, if your dodge is a one, we might as well take it to zero. You know what? Screw it. Hell, let's give you a debuff amulet. It can't hurt. It could give you minus two speed, which also... You know what? Actually, I would prefer to have minus two speed. Give me blight and disease resistance. And then for old Shane, we're going to give him minus one speed, but we're going to counter that with minus one speed. So there you go. Yeah, that's perfect. Low speed party going into the cove. That way we can make certain that those four... The pods of four fishmen that do the catastrophic critical damage, we want to make sure they swing before all of our party because that's the best possible outcome. Especially if we surprise them so we can get hit twice in a row. That'll be great. Let's provision. We got a short mission here. I'm going to take a little more food than I ordinarily would. Not the maximum amount of food, but a little more than I usually would. I don't really need two anti-venoms. I will bring a bandage. One medicinal herb. Actually, I kind of like one of everything, except we don't really need a key. And then I think we'll just bring 12 torches. Again, a little more than usual on the torches, but we are doing a veteran mission here. And while we do have a veteran team, our equipment isn't exactly up to snuff yet because we can't upgrade it as much as we might like. But unlike our previous campaign where we had unlimited time and we could afford to grind out these heirlooms, we're working on a clock here. We're, uh, what is this, like our 14th dungeon in? We're roughly 15% of the way the through our maximum allotment of leads. Oh, good. Exploring 90% of rooms on this dungeon layout allows us the opportunity to skip exactly zero rooms. Perfect. Still, we've... <sighs> I mean, if we're ever going to do it, the now is sort of the time. Let get, get rid of tracking shot, actually, and give me point-blank shot. And I want to make sure these are in the right appropriate order. If we're ever going to try the Shambler... Now is the time. The question is, does this team have the soup to fight the Shambler? We could be putting damage on him from any position with Caitlyn Stark. We really could. The high protection, Caitlyn is good at that too. We've got... You know what? Probably not powerful. It's... Okay. It's not worth it with this team and here's why. My goal is to try and keep this team stress... To have their stress remain low. So we can get them into and through, theoretically, the first room of the darkest dungeon, or the first layer of the darkest dungeon, as fast as is humanly possible. So that we can have them start giving EXP bonuses to the rest of the team. Fantastic miss, by the way, Shane. That's not at all gonna fuck us. Or get us just catastrophically overwhelmed with stress. We have to get a stun. Fortunately, our Blasphemous Vile is gonna help make that work. And I feel like maybe we should just Jacques. Eight and six. All right, here comes a Seaward Slash. The dodge from Ned Stark, despite the fact that he has a one dodge. Here comes the Repost. Also, do man, it's a dodge fest up in here. Nobody can hit shit. We knew the stress wave was coming. This is why we brought Ned Stark. Caitlin with the dodge. Ned takes 15. Not the end of the world. Let's get some blight on these jump stains in the back there. And if Padme can deliver another one of her lightning strikes, we got a shot at maybe getting out of this without becoming just completely unwound. Okay. You see, this is what we're worried about. It's the catastrophic damage hits from the 17 Seaward Slashes in a row. That's 20 damage from two hits. On our character with the highest protection, I would also like to point out. You fishmen gotta die. As much as I don't want the stress, and I don't want it, Fishman gots to die. We can heal for five. We do have some Blight taken back there. Doomsay is going to get us a repost. Or not. Okay. Well, we cut a throat there, so one Fishman is down. A little bit of stress relief. We got some of that Doomsayer stress back. This guy's going to hit us with a stress wave. All right, we should probably do some stress relieving here. 
Uh, you are dead already. So we'll go ahead and throw some more blight at our friend, the frothing madman, who now also is dead. Do we want to change position? No, we don't. You know what? Here, pick a pistol. Shot. This may not kill him. It burns through the turn, doesn't get the kill, gives us an opportunity to throw another heal here. And then we can have Ned Stark both critical heal and stress relieve himself. That got rid of 12. That brought some back for us. You guys are dead. Just suck it. Yeah. Enjoy some blight. The problem with this team is going on short missions doesn't give them an opportunity to camp. And for these guys, camping is a big part of their stress relief paradigm. We need to camp in order to get the stress relief. Once again, we have surprised the enemy, which I, I just, I, I, I don't, don't, I don't want to surprise stuff. Please don't make me surprise things. It's, it's really the only thing I've ever won, is to just not surprise people. You know what? We could go for the stun, but you know what's better than a stun? Dead. Dead is better than stun. We got to start working this thrall over. He's going to explode and kill us all. That's what people said about the Trump candidacy, too. They're like, we got to start working this candidate over. He's going to explode and kill us all. And people at the DNC were like, yeah, you know, that probably won't happen. Gilly's got a pretty strong. Lead. And look where that got us, guys. There we go. Shane with the repost. We're actually getting some pretty good mileage out of our highwaymen. So, he will step in front of it, and I don't really care. His blight on either of these targets is phenomenally useful. This guy has a huge protection rating. Ned Stark takes it to the face yet again for eight. We're going to point blank shot. Not the most fantastic output from our point blank shot. Here comes the Octocestus. Bleed? We want to bleed, though. Nope, no bleed. Right. If we hit them both... There we go. You can't dodge in it when you're hitting you both, chump shit. Padme following up with a big old crit heal. Look at the size of that heal on Padme, they'd say. Nobody ever said that. I mean, I just said it, but I'm the only one. Technically, this guy does have fatal damage. Which is good, because we're probably going to throw a cure and then some all-around healing. Ned, we're going to pump you up a little bit. Then we'll have you throw your stress heal at whoever has the most stress, which is... That's fine. Caitlyn, take a little bit of knock off of that. Bring you down eight. This guy is not quite dead yet, but we're still going to cure this bleed. And a point-blank shot should finish him. Yep, that puts him down in the zone where he does have fatal damage now. We'll pump Shane back up with another big old heal from Podme. And we let this jackass drop dead. Unforgiving. Would like a little more gold, but who wouldn't like more gold? I got a Sally Struthers kind of feel when it comes to Darkest Dungeon and gold. Do you want more gold? Sure, we all do. Okay. Opportunity for some free stress relief here. 90%, 60, 70. Let's just go ahead and take the slam dunk. Yes, he didn't have any stress to relieve, so technically that was an opportunity wasted. Could have gone worse, though. What is this thing? The base relief. I can never remember what we use. Is it a shovel? Nope. Oh, good. Even the aged oak. Well, that sucked. The tempest's winds. Well, I was right about a shovel doing something. I was just wrong about that something being a good thing. Now we're going to have to exclusively throw stress relief at Shane and try and get his shit under control. Which is going to suck, because we also have... Yeah. I mean, the, the dodge is nice. Call of the Deep, which is a buff. What kind of buff? Bonus damage, bonus accuracy, but more problematically, bonus crit. For the slightest lapse in concentration. They're going to be throwing everything they can get at Shane, our highwayman. we got to take this man down. This Pelagic Shaman, he gets to go. If we get five on the Blight, that's fatal. Now, he has six... Shit. We could heal or we could go for the kill. I'm going to risk it on the heal. I want that guy dead. I don't want to get hit with another stress attack. And we are going to be throwing some heals here. Great. We heal you for four stress and in return you give us stress. Right. The seems really unfair, Shane. 
All right, cultist, going for the Eldritch Pull. Padme with the big old dodge. Check out the dodge on Padme. I don't know why I'm sexualizing Padme here. I mean, if Anakin did it, why can't I do it? Is it wrong for me to try and sexualize Padme Amidala? Anakin did. I mean, he was a Jedi forbidden to love. We were point blank shining there just to sort of recover our position. We do need to start throwing some heals here. Also, we're bleeding huge. We're gonna try and get rid of Ned's stress. If we can grind him down to zero, as often as we're getting critical, that's gonna be a real damn problem because every time we get swung at, we get critical. We're bleeding for a billion. Yeah, okay, that's good. Make things worse, Shane. Nicely done. You know, I've got half of a mind to not cure your bleed, but I'm going to. Anything but a critical. Okay, the return critical is nice because we needed that stress. How are we bleeding again? I just fixed that. We really got to get Shane's stress under control. Uh, please kill me. I just want to get Repost active. This guy with the Octocestus has critical us like 55 times in a fucking row. And all we're going to be able to get out of Ned is a bunch of ghetto stress relief. That's the only thing we're going to be able to get out of. And we got to throw a billion heals here at Shane to try and keep him out of the doghouse. And yes, I'm aware I threw an attack. I know I threw an attack at a guy who was already suffering from fatal damage. You've got to be kidding me. These criticals. We have maximum light level. We're not supposed to be getting critical like this. We, at this point, sort of need a group heal, which is not enough since every fucking hit is a critical. Starting to get real salty. The bleed is also getting real irritating. In Radiance, may we find victory. This is the toughest pelagic bulwark we have ever seen. Please cure the bleed. This guy. This guy, though, he just won't go down. He's some sort of unstoppable madman. I think he's, you know what? He's juicing. That's what it is. He's juicing. This guy's on roids. I, that, no, I'm calling, I'm calling the commissioner. We're coming in. We need some testing here. I, I feel like, uh, I think, think this guy is using some performance enhancing substances. And I, I think we need somebody to come in and adjudicate this immediately. The critical from Caitlin is nice. You do have not shit. I thought he had fatal damage and he does not. Doesn't matter though. We still gotta keep pumping the heals. The game's gonna start giving me stress saying that I'm such a terrible fucking unbelievable. Abso fucking lootly unbelievable. This guy has criticaled us with every other swing. Ridiculous. Please cure that lead. Also, the game is going to start penalizing us for toying with this guy, even though we're doing our best to kill him. Absolutely fuck all ridiculous. Alright, we gotta get some food in here. Restore the group to its proper order. Mm, real salty about that fight. Everything was fine until, you know, that fight. And then we got critical 8,000 times. We did get six leads, though. Otherworldly corruption. <sighs> also, smashing the thing and getting abusive relief didn't fucking help our cause a whole hell of a lot, did it? Ned Stark, I'm getting rid of your kleptomania because at this point you have stolen more than it would cost us to get rid of it. Ned, literally, you, you, okay, you know what? Fuck you, Ned. You deserve that one, you asshole. You're taking money from your own mouth. You want upgraded weapons and armor, Ned? Stop stealing everything that isn't nailed down. We could get a little free stress relief here for our boy. Oh, good. He failed. And picked up an extra 15 stress. This is perfect. Well, we're going to have to sideline these guys for at least a week then while we, for once, there was a sack and Ned didn't steal it. He's full. 
we're gonna have to sideline this team now for at least a week because we're gonna have to put Jane in stress relief. Which is problematic. We need to keep these guys going through dungeon after dungeon after dungeon after dungeon. Oh, maybe you should study the wiki to see what things go with what. You know, that's not the way I like to play video games. If I wanted to do Another Talmudic nightmare. levels of research and know Another the ins and outs of every game before I bothered to play it, why wouldn't I just study games as opposed to play them? If I can't remember, you know what? That's on me. Although I, I gotta admit, I, you know, I, I did remember that the shovel did something. I just didn't remember that it did a bad. Glittering thing. gold, trinkets and baubles, paid for in blood. Also, this dungeon is not over because we do have to explore ninety percent of rooms. But there's a non-zero chance we might not have to fight anymore. Which, for me, would the sort of be a good lit. thing since the path is clear. looking at our current you require only the strength to follow it. Looking at our current assets here, I'm checking the spreadsheets and uh, looking at the ledgers here, and I, it looks like we're coming at a loss on this mission. For once, Ned decided not to steal a pack, and of course, that's the one that didn't have anything in it. Your thievery, Ned, is troublesome to me. This dungeon has two shamblers in it. That seems reasonable. The only two curios we didn't touch were both of the shamblers. Also, all we have to do is make it to this room, and we will I will make it through that room. To it and through it, and we have completed our quest. We're also borderline dead here. The critical from Shane is nice. A little bit of free stress relief. Puts that guy right on the edge of death. We are going to have to uh, pump up the volume Christian Slater style here. Point blank shot. Take a repost for the trouble. Also, it moved us back, which honestly, eh, it's not really a big deal. I don't, I don't mind. And that should have fatal damage on the Fusilier. There we go. We want both the heal here and the stress relief. Mostly the stress relief, but the heal is nice too. And we're just going to keep stacking the blight. Stop giving people stress, you jerk. That may be fatal damage on both of those rear two units. In fact, Great yes, it is, is. fatal damage. On its own. Double deadly, they like to call it, down in the darkest dungeon, because I like saying the letter D. More pumping up for Shane. Ned's a little bit tougher than Shane. The theoretically, he is healing Shane. We should probably have tried to focus that. And the bleed is not good. We're bleeding around the horn. You're bleeding twice. Why? Yeah, at this point, we, we just got to focus on getting the hell out of the dungeon. That's really what we need to do. Hey, by the way, fat man, point blank shot. I'll go one for one on you. How's that? Turn about is fair play. Shit biscuit. We're not going to get our stress down to zero to get a free... Ned Stark has been critical like eight... Tr oh, don't die, Ned. Don't, don't die. Don't die, don't die Ned. Unfucking believable Self-preservation is paramount at any cost. How many fucking times could we possibly get critical in the same dungeon? Yeah, you should start freaking out, because Ned is dead, and now's when the fucking Empire falls completely apart. I'm so salty. That's two. We have a maximum of eight more team... Oh, God. It was also one of our highest-ranked people. A member of our A-team is bought... Also, we're not even through the dungeon yet. Please take us out of here. Well... I knew it was coming. We had two smooth missions in a row. We were due, and then here it is, right here. I'm very salty. Now we have... That That actually may be a run-ender, now that I think of it. That may be it. Because now we have no premier team to try and rush the dungeon. And you have to rush the dungeon to get people to a high enough rank. Oh, good, and we got every single possible negative quirk. Guilty conscience, hysterical blindness, automatonophobia, and manslay. Oh, this is perfect. And also, you know, Ned is dead. Ned's dead, baby. Ned's dead. It's not as good as when it happened In to Zed. Time, you will know the tragic extent of my fate. And two of our team are freaked out. I think probably Caitlyn appropriately so. 
And we have to get rid of Hysterical Blindness because it's god-awful. Minus 20 accuracy. Yeah, it's a, it's a real problem. So this team is sidelined for at least two weeks until we get them... I mean, theoretically, we want them to have another Crusader or somebody who can at least fill in. Who's our next highest rank tank? It's probably Bubba Blue. But now this team has to have somebody who can do stress relief and that's only a Crusader. We're gonna have to start trying to level up Wash and you know what we may do? We may take Wash into a dungeon and just pull him in over his head. Because he'll play, he'll catch up. The faster we can do that, the faster he can catch up. Padme, by the way, completely unfazed by the day's event. She doesn't give a shit as long as her chew toy Anakin is in good shape. All right. Caitlin, you know what? There's nothing to help you get through your grief like a nice gambling junket, so you may as well go gamble. Shane, I'm more interested in getting rid of your hysterical blindness than I am in getting rid of any of this other stuff. So... Let's go get that taken care of. Very salty. And sort of at a loss. We have an open roster slot now. I mean, is there anybody good in it? Nope, not really. What do we need to get this? Weapon smithing and armor smithing both have to come up. Well, the weapon smithing, I think we can do. Yes. Uh, weapons or armor first? I think weapons. And then we need... Ten more deeds, we can get our armor smithing, and maybe that's how we counter out of this hole a little bit. Maybe we can recruit somebody who's a little higher rank and then start buffing them up. And we do have quite a few Crusaders. I mean, we got Hoburn Washburn here. We got Dwayne Hicks waiting in the wings. We got to have somebody with stress relief, though. It really feels like that somebody is going to be Wash. We're going to have to try and start maybe power level and Wash a little bit, but that'll have to wait till next time. If you enjoyed the episode, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Of course, your support does really mean a lot. And if you'd like to see Ned Stark, I don't know what to say about the guy. Every single time. It's it's, it's Sean Bean. It's got to be what it is. Sean Bean always dies. He always dies no matter what we do. There's no force in the universe that can save Sean Bean. I can't fight the universe, man. I just can't do it. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.